right, guys, we're going to do the calculations for molar mass by freezing point depression. We're going to start out with the data from one of the groups. Um, I'm particularly using Susan's um, only because I had her email in my file, so I knew how to get a hold of her. And once you have your data, you should have the time um, and the temperatures of both your naphthalene and your mixture. You're going to take your data and you're going to type it in to the um, Excel sheet. Um, you only need one column for time, and then you can do the other four columns for your naphthalene and your mixtures. Once you've got those, you need to graph these. When we graph these, you've got to be careful because we really need to be able to use this data. So when we want to graph these, we're going to go to insert. We're actually, let's go back to the table first. And we're going to take and we're going to grab two of the columns. I'm going to do time and naphthalene run one. Make sure that you have your x-axis to the left of the y. So because time is my x-axis, it's on the left. And I'm picking run one for absolutely no good reason. And I'm going to go straight here to insert my chart. It's always going to be a scatter chart. And I want it without any of the lines attached because I'm going to add those by hand. So I've got my chart. Now you're going to have to title these. So however you call them. So if I call that naphthalene run one, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to make sure I put X's titles on here so that I've got temp on the um, Y axis. I've got um, time on the X axis. If I do that a little carefully, I'll actually remove the writing on that one. And I've got this. Now, I can't read this graph. I've got to actually get a temperature off this. So I really need to fix this. So I'm going to do this two ways. One, I'm going to adjust the graph so that a lot of the empty space down on the y-axis is removed. So if I go here and I just right-click on one of the labels on the y-axis, because I need to format that axis. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the minimum such that the minimum here is I'm going to pick 75. Again, for no particularly good reason, I just knew it would fit in. So I've got it so that my graph fits the entire page. Now, once I've done this, I need to do a bit more inserting because I still can't read the data off this. To read the data, I've got to put in more grid lines. So I'm going to put in primary, minor, and major grid lines. Now, once I've done this, I can actually look at this and try to figure out what my temperatures are. So what I need or what I need to remember here is that I've got two different points on this. I have cooling, which is my liquid cooling, which is right here on the first set of data. And I have my solid freezing, which is this part down here at the bottom. You have two options on this. You can either print this out and put this in with a ruler, or you can go ahead and allow um, Excel to do this for you. Um, if you want to allow Excel to do this for you, you need to insert, you need to grab shapes, and you just need to grab a line. And you can take with your mouse or with um, some sort of a writing device, and you can put in a best fit line. Now, what I mean by a best fit line is that it takes into account all of the data points that we're looking at. So here, I needed to shift that a little bit because it kind of ignored that second one, but that's a pretty good best fit line. That is for the cooling of the liquid. I need another one for the freezing. For the freezing, I'm going to take and do a line that goes through the freezing points. It's not quite there yet, so I'm going to shift up the left side a little bit, and I've got a best fit line through the cooling of the liquid and the freezing of the liquid or freezing of the solid. Now, the freezing point is the intersection of those two lines. So if I take a good look at that, I'm going to get a little higher than 79, so maybe about 79.7. .7. So let's call this my freezing point of naphthalene at 79.7. Point seven. I'm going to do the same thing with the rest of the graphs. So how would I do that? Well, if I wanted to do a second graph, maybe the second set of naphthalene, I need my time data and I need my naphthalene run two. If you're going to do that, you're going to separate them. You need to hit the control button. So click and drag down your time, hit and hold down the control button and click and drag down naphthalene run two. That will separate out run one. And so we can just grab run two. You're going to need to do that for all four graphs. When you do it for the mixture, so if I grab my time, I hit my control button and hold it down and grab the temperature of the first run of the mixture. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to insert, chart, scatter plot. 
Once I've done this, I realize I've got mostly empty space, so I'm going to format my axis. I right click on one of the labels on the Y axis to do that. I go to my minimum. I pick a minimum that works, and I'm going to pick 70 on this one, see how that does. Pretty good. I'm going to go back and I'm going to put in my grid lines. So that's my chart elements, the little plus on the top right. On my grid lines here, I'm going to put in the primary, minor, and my major. And if I'm going to put in the lines using Excel, again, I'm going to go to Insert, Shape, the line, and I'm going to take and put in a line through the liquid cooling. I'm going to grab and I'm going to put a second line through the solid freezing, a little bit more carefully than that one. I'm going to put my second line through the solid freezing. And remember, you can take these lines and you can grab them and move them. And you can get a nice best fit line. So I've got a nice line. Now, the intersection of those two points is going to be the freezing point. So you're going to read those off. So let's just take at this point make some assumptions. Let's say that my freezing point of my mixture is equal to um, 76 degrees Celsius. Now, I can finish up and do the calculations given this information. So how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to take here, I'm going to just shift a bit of data so I can work this. If I have my two freezing points, I'm going to take here, I'm going to just, let me do a little inking. I'm going to take my freezing point, my first one, so I'm going to get 79.7, and I'm going to subtract my Second point, which is 76.0, and this is going to give me delta T sub F. Delta T sub F from this data is 3.7 degrees Celsius, and this is equal to I M K sub F. Well, this is a this is going to be here um, a nice nonpolar solvent. So if I go back and I look at this, I realize that I has to be 1. K sub F is given as 3 point, or 6.80 degrees C per molal. And now I can plug this in and solve for this. 3.7 degrees Celsius is equal to our 1 multiplied by the molality. Well, molality is moles of solute over the mass of the solvent in kilograms. Now, you're going to have to get that from your data sheet. Um, if you have, so on this particular data sheet, the mass of the solvent in kilograms was uh, 4.6302 grams, excuse me, that's grams, not kilograms. In kilograms, that would be 0 0.0046302 kilograms. So take whatever your math, mass of naphthalene and put it into kilograms. So if I have my mass of my naphthalene here in kilograms. I can finish up what I'm going to be doing here for my calculations. So using that value, 0 0.0046302 kilograms multiplied by K sub F, 6.80 degrees C per molal, I can solve for X moles of my solute. So that's going to be 3.7 multiplied by 0 0.004630 um, divided by 6.8, and I'm going to get 0 0.002502. Go I'm only really going to have two sig figs at the end of this, and that is going to be moles of my solute. My molar mass are going to will be the grams of the unknown that you weighed out divided by your moles of your solute. Once you have that done, you can take and compare it to your possible unknowns. So you're going to have here your molar mass. Watch your sig figs on that one and realize your three unknowns are benzyl, benzophenone, and p-dichlorobenzene. Compare the molar mass that you have gotten from your calculations to the molar mass of these three, and you've got this thing knocked out. You present error, and you'll go to the Lewis structures and tell me why your unknown will dissolve in naphthalene. And those are your calculations for molar mass by freezing.